Nation. Let's get it. Yo, salute to everybody here in the building. You already know what time it is, man. I see my boy Hug D's in the building. Webster, Mondo, Carlos, my dog, Sean, Algram. Come on, man. Everybody is here, man. Make sure you guys wipe them feet, meaning hit them thumbs up. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We are getting closer and closer to 21,000 subscribers. And it's because of you guys, man. Salute to you. Kind of a rarity, you know, doing a show on Sunday, no live stream for the game. Everyone knows we got Monday Night Football tomorrow at the Detroit Lions. So I wanted to do something special for the nation today. You know what I mean? Kind of talk to everybody, bring on some former Raiders um, and some guys that also have their own podcast that we want to shed some light on. I see uh, Lenny Danger in the building, man. Raider Nation, salute to my guys, man. You already know what time it is. Let's bring in one of our guests. Salute to my guy. Got my brother, Gary Yon. What's good, King? What up? What's, What's good? good? What's good doing? with you, man? How you been, man? I'm good. How you doing? I see you, bro. You look like a professional podcaster, man. <laughs> Got my <laughs> set up, right? Yeah. Nah, facts. Hey, real quick, man. Salute to everybody here. You guys, let's show one of our own how much we support what they do, okay? So this is the link to Gary Yon Conley's new podcast. It's on YouTube. Make sure you guys go over there and hit that subscribe button. I don't care if you have to leave real quick to do it. Leave, go hit that sub button. There's no reason why we can't get a monetized today. So hit that That's hit that bad, subscribe bro. button, man. Run it up. He just started this channel, you guys. So let's shed some light over there. And they put on great content, man. They're doing really, really good things for you, sports. Trying to put, you know, give these young kids game on, on how to come up in the football world. So make sure you guys go over there and subscribe. And also... Put some comments down in the comment section, some questions, and let's talk to our brother, man. What's good with you, man? What's what's new on Conley Island? <laughs> Nothing new for real. Uh, same shit, just been rehabbing. Well, I guess new is I'm I'm healthy or healthier than I was what last time I came on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I hit on my agent and told him like uh, to start hitting up teams so I get a workout. So I'm basically just at the point where I'm still working out, still rehabbing. Uh, yeah. But if I get an opportunity, I'm going to be ready. And it's crazy, bro, because so much, so many people in the NFL right now, organizations need corner help. Like yeah. you, you see it all across the board. I see Philly can need that. They can use some help in the, you know, in the, in the secondary Detroit, good teams mm -hmm. at that, not just the bottom of the barrel teams. Like there's some teams out there that can use your services, bro. Yeah. Be, it wouldn't it be crazy if you just got right back into the league, <laughs> went to Philly and won the Super Bowl. That would be crazy. Yeah, bro. That'd, that'd be, be some wild. shit. But, you know, <laughs> Also know a team that, you know, resides in Las Vegas now that can use some corner help as well. But, you know, okay. we'll talk about that later on, man. Salute to AP, says Gary on Ohio State and Raiders represent. Hey, yeah, have, you keep, have, you been, have you been keeping an eye on CJ Stroud out there? I know you live in Houston, right? Yeah. So I know the Texans are doing their thing right now. Have you been keeping an eye on the, on the young kid out of Ohio State? Uh, I've just been seeing the highlights and everything. I watched, I think I watched one game. I think it was against Jacksonville. Okay. Uh, I don't know what game it was. I didn't watch the whole thing though, but I don't really watch sports. Like I just watch, I watch film. I'll be watching all 22s. Yeah. And all that, but. When you uh, gonna start doing some breakdown on that, bro? You got, you got to do some breakdown on that on the channel, bro. That, that's something that you yeah. can bring to the game that a lot of people can't do. Yeah. We was going to talk about doing that. Uh, me and my cousin, uh, he was saying like, you want to do like film reviews. And I was yeah. like, yeah, we should start doing that. Just trying to get our agenda right because we feel like we're a little all over the place but that's yeah. how we want to be low-key like to be like different aspects like football 
like mental health, like yeah. lifestyle, um, getting people on that aren't just football players and stuff like that too. So we want to like go through different avenues of life, not just a sports podcast. As you should though, bro. Like, like you should, you never want to pigeonhole yourself just to one thing. I mean, I know you love the game of football, but you bring so much yeah. more to the table than just that. You know what I mean? And speaking yeah. of that, man, what, what's the latest um, in the Connolly world in terms of you sports and, and what you guys are doing over there with the podcast? As far as you sports? Yeah, youth and just uh, everything you guys got going on over there. Let, let the people kind of know what you guys got going on also in terms of the podcast. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I mean, the podcast, honestly, I wanted to do it like a year or two ago, but I just was procrastinating and didn't really do it. And then my cousin, he's actually – so if anybody who doesn't know, I train DBs and wide receivers uh, right now. He's actually the one who inspired me to start training. Uh, yeah. He's younger than me, which is crazy. He's, what, 24, I think? Uh, and he coached at the University of Akron at age 23. Like, wow. He's coaching college players when he's in college. Like, he still was in school. He was actually taking classes at Akron while he was coaching. That's team. crazy. Like, crazy. But – he actually started training uh, about like four years ago, I think, or five years ago. And I just would go back home because he's from Ohio. And yeah. I would like go to his workouts. Like I would pull up to his workouts sometimes like to just help out or just watch or whatever. And I just seen him the way he was with the kids and stuff. And I was just like, man, I want to do this in Houston. Like, because I know kids, my stepson for one, uh, he's 16, but at the time he was what 14 when I started. Yeah, yeah. And then he had friends and teammates, so I started training them. So uh, as far as like him, me wanting to do it, the podcast with him was like we shared the same like values and like morals, obviously. And yeah, yeah. we just always talk. Like me and him will. So like he trains me when I go to the field. Like I'll tell him the drills yeah. and stuff. But he's the one who takes me through my workouts. We'll fuck around and be at the field for three hours because we were talking like just about life or like just shit, like not even getting through the the workout. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was just like, man, I want to do a podcast because like all the shit we talk about, we should like do a podcast. Like so people yeah. here. And that's why we started it. And it was just like I said, it was more than just you sports. It was about like we got one that's called definition of success, like product of environment, like positive influence, all that shit. So it's different views podcast everybody right now in the comment section is saying they're going over there and subscribing make sure you guys like i said support one of our own man they do a really really good job over there man not just yeah. talking football like he said mental health just life um yeah. as a whole man so salute to our brothers man i'm gonna ask you this man i, I seen that you posted something on twitter yesterday the, the shallow sanders hit right where he was ejected out of the game the colorado yeah. Yeah. game last night i want to ask your opinion because this shit's been happening a lot lately, bro. I don't know if you've been, you you haven't really been watching the NFL like that. I understand, but like Justin Simmons of the Denver Broncos, mm -hmm. um, he had a lot of targeting, a lot of targeting calls this season. I'm gonna be real, some of them rightfully so, but mm -hmm. he was just suspended four games, um, hitting I believe the Green Bay Packers tight end Luke Musgrave. I believe that's who it was, and it was clear that he hit him on the shoulder. They called it right. a head, you know, uh, um, helmet to helmet. How do you view that rule right now? Because, you know, the, the game that you grew up in is a little – oh, Kareem Jackson, my apologies. Not not Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, i seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But how do you view that right now, bro? Like, like, is the game really getting softer now? Because as a DB, how do you control – I mean, I, you know, yeah. like, how do you control that? Right. Like, the Shiloh, yeah. that, that was a terrible, terrible call to me. I was yeah, just it like, was awful. Yeah, man, like, like, how do you view that, bro? Yeah, I think – it is getting softer uh and it's them trying to say they're trying to make it safer which i understand trying to make the game safer but yeah it's just like at the end of the day if a guy is running full speed like it's hard for him to stop and think like oh i gotta make sure i hit him between this zone and this zone like man, yeah. i'm trying to go make the play like at this point it's like you might as well play flag football if you're gonna keep on car all these damn targeting calls like you're not trying to do it on purpose. Like, I don't feel nah. like there's any, I mean, you get a guy, if somebody's talking shit or whatever, you're trying to hit them. But I don't even think in that instance, like nobody's trying to hurt somebody to where their life is on the line or something like that. You're just trying to inflict your pain as far as football. Like you tackle, it's a violent sport. Yeah. But like to, to call and then to call all these calls and review it and to see it and to still make the call. Like that's like these refs need to be like punished or, fine or whatever or 
like yeah. not being able to ref like they need to be like switching these refs out because i know it's a lot of refs and uh i seen this organization that came out here to houston and they had like a big ref convention and all that stuff yeah, so yeah. i know it's like a lot of refs out here so like if refs aren't doing their job like they need to get a monitor and get new ones in there because yeah. we have and i was talking to my players about this a couple of weeks ago like uh and i seen a dude for a backup quarterback for green bay he was talking about it uh how we have meetings every week in the nfl on the ref crew and yeah, yeah it's just like we we are scouting the refs not even just the players like we literally have the refs on the fucking board in the meeting That's and like this crazy. ref calls he's heavy on pass interference or he's heavy on this or he's heavy and it's just like the fact that we know this is like why is he still reffing like that it, is be crazy one, it'll be one where they're like oh this ref has the most uh, holding penalties in the history of football or yeah. this season or whatever. It's like, why is he still refing? Like, so, why so is he not controlled? You're telling me you're game planning for two different opponents at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and not just saying like us, like it's offense and defense. Like yeah, yeah. your ref that has like the highest penalties in or the highest penalty calls for offensive of holding or whatever. Like it's not even just about defense. Like it's, a off, it's football players in general. Yeah. Like, and it's like, it helps with like us to know that but it's just like we shouldn't have to be game like why are we taking 30 minutes out of the day to go over the reps like yeah like, come on bro like i'm trying to study the, the players like you know that I mean? shit is crazy bro yeah the nfl man it's, it's a different and, and it's, it's funny yeah. because you know you haven't been in the league for a few years so the league has yeah. changed already since yeah. you've been out okay. rehabbing you know what i mean like yes. like going into you know, potentially being back into the NFL here soon. And, and mm -hmm. I've been praying for you as well, my brother. Like, Appreciate like, does that. that, is that a mindset that you're like, damn, bro, like the game has changed because it yeah. continues to change. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you go about that going in, potentially going back into the NFL? Yeah. I mean, that's, I kind of started watching NFL games this year, a little bit last year. I've been watching more this year uh, because of that. Cause I know like I was getting closer to, getting back healthy so i'm like i need to start like watching more i mean obviously i watch a lot of film yeah i watch so much film like people think like when i say i don't watch football like i don't watch it all i watch film i just don't you're watch watching actual TV. football yeah i don't watch the tv yeah. broadcast but i've been starting to watch it because of these rules and stuff because when you're just watching film it isn't talking you know the commentators actually give insight so yeah. i actually learned the other day that they changed the not the is it holding it's either the holding or the pi rule Mm -hmm. and it's uh like if it automatically hinders or like forcefully hinders the receiver from catching it yeah and the ball is in the air or something like that so it was like the dude was holding or pi or whatever but the ball wasn't there or something so they didn't call it the pass interference and i was like i didn't even know that because i'm used to them just calling it yeah in there so it definitely does uh like help watching those games on tv like because the game has changed and i've definitely been thinking about that and yeah. Shit, even the targeting calls, like I just been watching a lot of that shit and I've been taking notes just so like I'm ready when I do come back. Yeah, it's like an OG lyricist coming like coming back into the game now and like the, yeah. the, <laughs> like <laughs> like rap has changed and you're like, okay, how do I adapt to this? Yeah. The, the, the last time we did a show, man, well we didn't talk about this. It happened shortly after. There was yeah. some news that, that came out. Um, a guy named James Larson that um mm -hmm. Drop some news on Twitter. Uh, me and Scout were kind of going back and forth. My boy Scout going back and forth with you um, mm -hmm. on the shit. It was breaking news that you had signed with the XFL oh, defenders, right? And, and yeah. I remember your response was, it's a complex situa situation, but you're grateful for the opportunity for sure, right? Yeah. Like, wh whatever happened you know, with that XFL situation, because I know you're still rehabbing and now you're taking calls from NFL teams. What Whatever happened with that? Yeah, so it's just... Basically, like, dude hit me up and was, like, given the opportunity to play in the XFL. And I'm like, yeah, I'm all for it. And it's yeah. like, I didn't sign anything. I still haven't or nothing. So it's like, I'm not on the team. But they basically said, like, they're giving me the opportunity to play with the team. So I'm like, all right, cool. And that was it. And um, they had had me attend, like, a meeting or something uh, where they were talking about, like, they were going to have uh, – they were going to have something like a mini camp. They were going to try to do like a mini camp for the XFL or whatever, but yeah. the NFL didn't allow it or something. Like that was like the only media I attended. But now was that like, I haven't had any really communication after that. Um, so nothing, not just nothing after that. Yeah. But he was just like, you guaranteed a spot. Like, 
Yeah. Cool. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, all right, bet. So when the time comes, like, if I don't get picked up, my plan was to get picked up by a team. And obviously, like, I haven't played in two and a half years. So it's like, I know if I end up getting picked up by a team, it's going to be practice squad or whatever. And it's like, I'm, I know I'm good enough to play in the league. So I'm not like, yeah. I'm not pissed. You're all not, for working your ass off. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. Like, if yeah. I don't get an opportunity with the NFL, though, I'm going to play in the XFL. So that's the whole thing of what it, why it even came up as a thing, because yeah. he was asking me, like, would you play in XFL? I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I don't have any pride. Like, yeah. I know I'm good enough to play in the league. If I got to go play in the XFL to get back in the league, it will help me because I'll get my reps and then I'll yeah. be able to play. So yeah. I'll get filmed. So that's how the whole XFL thing even came up. But then I guess it just, you know, whenever anything happens with anything, it's always yeah. going to be another story from somebody else, another yeah. story. And then I'm getting texts and calls and comments like, Congratulations! Da, da, da. And I'm like, what did I do? Like, it's funny. I shared it without even reaching out to you, bro. So, so when you responded, I was like, okay, this wasn't what I thought it was. Yeah, everybody was like, congrats, and I'm just like, damn. Let me go see what what I made, what I did. Like, yeah. And then I see it was like signed, and I was like, I didn't sign anything. I'm not on any roster. Yeah. And that's why I said I'm like, I'm grateful for the opportunity because I don't want to burn bridges because it's like. If I don't get in the league or anything, I do want to play in XFL and I do yeah. want to be on the team or whatever. So it's just like I made sure people knew, like, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Yeah. And if it's there, like, whenever, like, I'm definitely going to take it. But I didn't well, you- sign anything just to make sure. Because, like, that could also mess up with teams, too. Like, teams could yeah. be like, oh, maybe he just wants to go to the XFL or whatever. So I'm like, I'm going to make sure everybody knows, like, yeah, that's yeah. not what it is. It's just, like, the opportunity to present it. And yeah. if the time comes and I need to go to the XFL, I will. It's an option. But, you know what I'm point. saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know I'm I mean, you're only 28 years old, man. So you got plenty of time to 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 you know, what I mean, still yeah. still get your reps in. But the thing is this your love for like X's and O's, like yeah. and, and and you know, I, I seen it clear as day. We talked about this on the last pod when you were with my, my son Elijah. Yeah. The way you go about like is is coaching a realistic option in the future? Because I mean, bro, the love for X's and O's, yeah. that's clear cut uh, that you you should be a coach yeah. at some point i mean is that something that you've thought about man coaching is is tough because of the politics man like mm-hmm. it's politics at each this is even in high school and i'm seeing it with my stepson's high school and it's it's horrible out here in houston but it's just like so many politics there's so much shit that comes with it and it's just like that's why i became a trainer also it's like because it's like i get to train kids the way i want to do it yeah, and it's like a more of a connection because like I'm a real person. Like I feel like some coaches you'll get like those specific coaches, rare cases where they're actually connected to their players, they care. But it's like at the end of the day, a lot of coaches can't care yeah. like that because it's a business. Like yeah. whether it's high school, college, or pros, like it's a business. So training is more of a real, organic, and like transparent thing that I can do. And it's like I get to create the workout, and if you don't like it, you can leave. Like I don't care. <laughs> like. Yeah. You can go yeah. find another trainer, whatever, no hard feelings. Like, and I get to coach the kids the way I want to. And, and it's more detailed. Yeah. Like you said, X's and O's, like, yeah, but it's more detailed to the player. It's more detailed to the skill set, the fundamentals and technique and all that. So yeah, I want to like take this training thing. And me and my cousin have talked about planning like to get this thing like going. He has his own brand. We were gonna just like do our own things as far as our brands, but like do stuff together. Um and like, cause he trains different positions. He does running backs, D line linebackers, yeah, and yeah. I do DBs and wide receivers. And if we can like go and travel to like do like two day camps or three day camps or whatever, like that's yeah. going to be one of our goals. And like try to get a facility at some point out here in Houston. Yeah. But like, I want to do that. But if a great like opportunity for a coaching job comes up, like I would definitely consider it. Stu was telling that. us that too. He says it all the time on the pod. Former Raider. He'll, he'll be on here soon. He yeah. also said that there's so many politics in the coaching world because, you yeah. know, this guy has this certain amount of guys that he wants to bring in. And it's like, a, you know, what I mean, it, 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 yeah. it's, they're not going to bring in anybody outside unless you have a connect to the, it's it's a weird, weird world, bro. Yeah. So it's I all about who you know with that. Like, yeah, I yeah. remember when I got drafted to the Raiders, they were telling me like the safeties coach was just like Del Rio's boy or something like that. And he was like coaching high school linebackers or something <laughs> in high school the year before he was coaching us and he was yeah. our head db coach like instead of rod wilson like how does that make sense and then they had crazy. like 
fucking uh I remember they said like the linebacker. You remember Markel Lee? Yeah. Uh Kel's my dog. That's my mm-hmm. dog. He was telling me like the linebacker coach, his linebacker coach wasn't like a high school or was a high school coach before or something like that. Like just was Del Rio's boy too or something. And I'm just like, that's how this shit happens. Like yeah. it's all about who you know. I mean, look at fucking our defensive coordinator 2018. Like who is this dude? Like, how is he? And I understand he had a good defense in Cincinnati and shit, but like, if you nah, look bro. at it, like, bro, you have you ever played football, bro? Like, <laughs> that shit made no sense. Know. We talked about that previously, bro. Like, that defense, that scheme, that, like, I don't even, I still don't know what it was. I, I have no yeah. clue. What bro, it we were at so much shit, bro. Like, it was, it was so many different calls and so many different things. My boy was just like making up coverages. Like, we had cover nine. <laughs> I'm like, what is cover nine? Like, where did I even come from? Like, Yo, that shit is crazy. Salute to everybody here in the building. You guys get some questions in for our guy, Khan. I want to ask you this too, man, because I know you haven't really been paying too much of attention, but we're three and four right now, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the talk in the nation is Josh McDaniels um, losing the locker room, you know, him not being fit to be a head coach at the NFL level, um, mm-hmm. you know, his system not really working without Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the system. You know, yeah. Bill Belichick has struggled without him. Josh McDaniels has struggled without him. Well, apparently some news came out today that um, there was a, a a team only, players only, or well, not players only, but a team only meeting. There was, there was no media attached to it. Basically, Josh McDaniels set up a meeting where his leaders, Devontae Adams, Max Crosby, Josh Jacobs, um, were in there voicing their opinions on the personnel, on the play calling, on everything. Pretty much just an all-team meeting where they got a chance to put everything on the table, how they felt about the head coach, the DC, whatever, right? Coaches were there too? Yes, coaches were there also. Mm-hmm. Um, and Josh McDaniels gave them the floor. You know yeah. what I mean? And said, you guys, you know, basically this is this is what the quote was. Um, this week, the team reportedly held a meeting, which it hopes will spark better performances, opened up the floor to his players on Thursday, allowing everyone to voice their frustrations. According to NFL media, nothing was off limits as players would discuss personnel, team culture, and yes, coaching as well. Max, Devontae, and Josh were a few players who reportedly spoke up, but the NFL media reports that players from all over the roster took McDaniels up on this opportunity. The Raiders players reportedly considered the meeting to be positive, even cathartic. I want to ask you this. With your time in the NFL, have you ever had a situation like that? Fuck no, I wish (laughs) that we needed that for Gruden. Man, what? We needed that. But I think if the fact of if we would have had that with Gruda, I don't even think it would have went well. It would have been bad because it would have yeah. been a lot of talking shit. It would have been a lot of negativity. Like it just I feel like it would have been bad. But I feel like I mean, you never know. It's a what if situation, but it yeah. possibly could have helped us too. But like, no, nah, I never had that. And just while you were talking, like it, I didn't even let you like finish. And I already assumed in my head, like, man, that shit is positive as fuck. Like that's I know yeah. that should help. Cause it's just transparent. Like I just posted something about transparency and clarity the other day. Like, and it's like, it brings so much more like out of people. Like it, it, it promotes like growth. I swear. Cause one, you got players that are playing like they're playing for whatever, whatever yeah. reason they're playing for their kids, their family, they're playing for their money, whatever, but they're playing for something. So they mm-hmm. have a why and they're playing and they're giving their all on the field. Cause nobody's going to go out on the field and try to just make their own self look bad. Like that doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. So you got players that are all playing for their self or whatever they're playing for. And it's just like, you have coaches or personnel, GMs, whatever, if they're not being transparency or they're not being transparent or have clarity, it's like, you don't even realize what you're doing to the player's mindset. Like now the player starts to think like, should I be playing hard? Should I be doing this? Should I be, doing extra work should I be doing this because they don't give a fuck about me or they don't care or they just like this other player or they're not going to put me in or whatever it's just like yeah even if you don't put me on the field but if you tell me why or show me why I'm not on the field even if you if you just like this corner better than me like yeah. tell me that like don't say oh well you need to do this better do this better when I'm doing it better it's not being transparent or, or clear like if you just like this corner better you think he's better in this way, this way. All right, cool. Then I'm gonna go work harder. I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna try to find a way. I'm gonna yeah. press the trade, whatever, like whatever it may be. But when there's no clarity or transparency, it's like, how do you even fix the problem? Yeah. So yeah. with them doing that, I feel like that's a really good thing. Uh, 
because the coaches get to hear how the players feel. Mm-hmm. The players get to hear how the coaches feel. And you can only grow from that. Like, you got, yeah. you got the problem. You find yeah. out what the problem is, and then you get to fix it. And then if you don't fix it after that, then that's when you do trades and whatever, yeah. whatever. Because yeah. it's like you'll hear a lot of people get, like, traded or released or whatever. And everybody's like, damn, what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, if there's a question, that means there was no transparency. But no, thanks. If you have that meeting like they had and you start to see people leave or whatever, whatever, you'll know why. Yeah. And it's just like at the end of the day, it's nothing personal. It's just we came to a solution. That's the solution. Yeah. So I feel like that's definitely a problem. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, the team came together, coaching staff, and, and they're admitting that there's a problem. Yeah. You know and, 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 and how do you attack that problem without really having admittance and saying, you know what, I'll play a part in this, you play a part in this, let's figure it out. I think right. we'll see what happens. Uh, what team is going to show up tomorrow night? Monday night football against the Detroit Lions. They are a powerhouse this year. They're coming yeah. off of a bad loss to the Baltimore Ravens. They're coming off of blood. So yeah. I want to see what team responds. But I want to ask you, it's, it's funny because you instantly jumped to say like, shit, Gruden, like those, those were some struggling teams. Like, yeah. why do you think the issue, why, why do you think Gruden would have never stepped out and said, let's try this? Like, is it an ego thing with, with Gruden? Like, yeah, if, I think the ego. Was, I think he has an ego. Uh, I just I felt like bro was just a liar, bro. Like his <laughs> ego, he was just a liar. Like yeah, the shit, the shit we just went through, and like I said before, like it was times where I just didn't want to go into the building. Like I didn't yeah. want to play football. Like that's what I love to do. There's no reason why I should be feeling like that. Like I didn't want to be around him. But it was like, dude, was, for example, when he told us like, oh, we had a team meeting. He's like, oh. Everybody says I'm tanking it for first round picks and I'm throwing this year and this, this and that. And he's having a meeting and he'll get you to like low key believe him. Like, and it's just like, oh, yeah, he's he's really about it. And we'll have yeah. a good practice that day. And then the next day or two days later, Amari Cooper's getting traded for a first round pick. And then we like, bro, what? Like, you just told us in the fucking team meeting you wasn't doing that. Yeah. And then you traded this dude and then. You tell us this, this, and that, and you trade this dude or whatever, or you tell us this dude starting this week or this dude, whatever, and he doesn't play at all. And it's yeah. just like that's the point right there. Like, there's no yeah. transparency, there's no clarity. Like, just be real. Like, but that's you, the only way you get players to play harder for you anyway. You know, the problem though, Con, that, that's why there's not that many leaders in the world because the so called leaders, it's like you have to master the art of manipulation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you yeah. have to be like, I'm gonna tell these guys this, even though I don't believe it, just to just to unleash or unlock some type of something out of them in yeah. order for them to go off and play hard for me. Because you know, yeah. I've heard multiple things about John Grudy, even from his his last stint, you know, in Las Vegas. Players have told me behind the scenes, like, yo, he was this, he was that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he never sat down with you guys and talked about the defensive side of the ball with Polly G. Like, like he never pointed any fingers at him, like ever. At was Polly? It? Yeah. Fuck no, <laughs> that's crazy. Hell no, bro. And that's the problem with both of them. Like that's what it was. Is like they never took accountability for any. And it's because well, I feel like with Pauly is because it worked. That's yeah. whatever Cincinnati, whatever. I don't understand, but it, it's just like the way he came in was. I want all my corners to look the same. I wanted, and I'm like, bro, that doesn't make any sense. Like you can teach certain fundamentals of corners that everybody knows and everybody does, but all your corners aren't going to look the same. If I'm six one and I'm fast and my acceleration is a little slow, but I have long speed and I have good hips, I have good ball skills. I'm going to play different than a guy that's a five nine or five ten corner that's yeah. actually quicker, but not long speed, but doesn't have long arms. It doesn't have good hips or ball skills. Like. It just doesn't work the same way. Or there's a corner that's really good at playing press, or there's a good corner that's playing off, like or that plays zone well or man well. Like yeah. you have different corners and different types of things. So how are all your corners gonna look the same? We all got drafted here off different capabilities. Like yeah. that's how we play. So you got to understand that I try to meet somewhere with the player. It was like a my way or no way type deal with them. So yeah. it's like once you already come in and establish that as a man already, you're like, hold on, bro, like. Nah, it's already some tension, like little tension right there. As soon as you yeah. come in, it's my way or no way, because you're not even trying to understand me or listen to me at all. So it's already tension there. And yeah. then it gets to the point where it just keeps building up. And then, like you said, like if you just don't have clarity or anything like that, then it's just going to keep getting folded or just keep going to keep folding. We got we got Jesus Christ himself in the building. Um, 
<laughs> Stu, I can't you hear it? nothing. He said you uh, can't hear anything. You're probably on mute on your end. Try and mess with it a little bit. Um, salute the Reaper, man. Do you consider 2018 your best year as a pro? I think we talked about this on the mm -hmm. last on the last show, but is 2018 statistically? Uh, yeah, it's crazy because like the full year, yeah. But I mean, I feel like my years in the NFL have been so weird, bro. Like my first year, I played what I missed the first game, played the second game, I played good against the Jets. Third game, I didn't really play. I didn't play bad. I didn't play good though. Like I didn't really yeah. have action. I remember. I remember uh, that game. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I'm hurt. I miss the rest of the season. My second year, I'm doing good, but I'm. I don't even think people really realize. Like the first half of the season, I wasn't even playing the full games. Like I was yeah. splitting reps, and I would get taken out if I gave up like one pass or like missed one tackle or something like that. And it's like. Other dudes were giving up passes, giving up touchdowns, and they wouldn't get taken out. But if I messed up once or like twice or whatever, just on some like gave up a catch or gave up a first down, like I would get taken out. And I remember Whoa. in the Browns game. We hear you. We hear you. Can you hear us? All right. <laughs> Mess with your mic, bro. I'm I'll bring you back on. Salute to and I remember uh like even in the first what. Browns game, Miami game, I was playing good. Uh, the Browns game, I was playing decent. And I remember not playing in the fourth quarter of both of those games. Or, like, I played in, like, the first minute of the fourth quarter in the Miami game and, like, didn't play the rest of the game because I gave up an out to Kenny Stills. And it's like, man, I was balling that game. Like, it's yeah. like, you take me out for one out? Like, come on, bro. And then in the, uh, the Browns game, I didn't play the whole fourth quarter or the overtime. And it was just like, I wasn't playing that season, but I was doing good. And – Obviously, we didn't have like the best season, so it doesn't really matter. They, people don't really look at it like, yes, you're playing good. You don't really have a good season. Yeah. Stu, you good? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear All us? Right. Yes. 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 Oh, real quick. Sorry salute. about that. No, you're good. Salute to everybody here in the building. I would like to properly introduce my guys. Uh, former Raider safety Stuart Schweiger, leading interception guy from Purdue of all time. Yeah. Okay. Um, no bucks. <laughs> so we got an Ohio State and Purdue boiler. I love, I, we got, yeah, we got the Big Ten connection, man. I'm, I'm a Michigan. I'm from Michigan. You're from oh, Ohio. You know oh, what I, mean? so, oh. <laughs> I definitely want to talk about that here in a second. Salute to our brother Stu. South the cheese sounds good, but we'll be laughing at that kumbaya. Share your feeling uh, session if we don't start winning. At this point, I just look forward to game day to spend time with the nation, drink and chill. Salute to our brother cheese man on a ten dollar donation as well appreciate you brother and you're right all that kumbaya shit sounds good if you're not winning it doesn't matter yeah. um so we got a safety and a corner two two raider alumni in the building um i i love this because you know my favorite position i, I just hey, love hey, 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 i love hey. the db room period the safety the safety position the corner position and you guys being former raiders man having you guys on screen together is 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 really truly dope, Con. I want to ask you, bro. So me me and Lou, I mean me me and Stu were just at the alumni party yeah. um, a few months ago. Do you get the invite? The invite to to the alumni parties because I know most Raider players. I mean maybe maybe it's because you're still active and, and you're yeah. still um, you know work working your way back into the NFL. But Mark extends the alumni party like like invite to every like all former Raiders. It's like, have you yeah. not gotten? No, nope. right, they hit me up for uh, like the the brick or stone. Yeah, the brick. Yeah, yeah, the brick. They, the they brick. Yeah. About that, but they didn't invite me to no parties. But like you said, it might be because of that. Because okay, of, okay, maybe, maybe it is because you're still yeah, active and yeah. still. Ha have you gone to any of the alumni stuff there in Vegas? Me? Yeah. No, no, no. no? I haven't. I haven't been. The only thing I was contacted up, uh, about was the brick. Like I haven't been contacted about anything else. With I'm sorry. With what? The brick. Uh, the brick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, that was did you the get only yours? Um, I don't know. I sent the information. <laughs> they were like, "What do you want?" They asked me like, "What number do you want? Twenty one or twenty two? Because I wore both numbers." And I said twenty one. And no, you, Stu, call, call Katie at some point to ask because I, I would. Uh, love yeah, you. that's what I was. Just, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah, because the next time I'm out there, I would like to get a picture of Cons Brick and Yeah, Stu's absolutely. Book. That that yeah. would be dope. You got any questions, Stu, man? But you know, from Raider to Raider, man. 
Well, no, no, no. I was, I was, obviously, I was excited to meet you. Um, yeah, you nice know, you Big too, Ten. Sure. You know, uh, you know, I went to Purdue. Uh, you know, you went to Ohio State. I have a lot, a lot of uh, Ohio State friends. And um, not nah, man, I'm, I'm just, ha- I'm just happy to get a chance to meet you and just chop it up for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I, I, and Connor, I'm very upset, man, because a few weeks back, I'm in Vegas. I'm watching a, a, a college game, right? You know, and I'm like, wow, my fighting Irish are about to beat the Buckeyes right now. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting in this party. We're throwing a Raider party out there at Tropicana. And I'm sitting there like, wow, we really about to pull this shit off. Yeah. And last and last second, boom, yeah. Buckeyes win the game. <laughs> how, how are you feeling about Ohio State this year? Uh, I'm feeling good about the defense, man. I mean, that's that was my biggest thing about – like this year was to see the defense improve from the last couple of years, and they they've showed up for sure. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, offense, the court, the I feel quarterback, like, he, I yeah. think, well, he threw two picks yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, I think, yeah, 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 which is not like him at all. And this is like, I understand to a certain degree because it's like a new quarterback, it's a a new type of pressure. You don't know what he's dealing with mentally or whatever. So I feel like they just need to find a way to get him to keep his rhythm once he gets it uh, to be more consistent. But like I said, it's his first year um, being Ohio State quarterback. I mean, I never was, but I've seen it and see multiple. I know it's a big, big thing to carry and a tough thing mentally for sure. Uh, so I think he can definitely improve. He shows signs of being good for sure. Uh, hey, just got to be more consistent for sure. Hey, Stu, just a second ago, Khan was talking about um, Polly G having – his DB, DB's coach be a guy that came from high school, the high school level, right? We we're talking about pretty much how you, you know how you always say the coaching world is so political, right? No, that was Del Rio, that was Del Rio. Oh, Del Rio, my, my apologies, Del Rio yeah. brought in his own guy, you know, so on and so forth. Over <laughs> who'd you say, Con Rod Woodson? Yeah, I, that's the story I was telling you about, man. But even after John Gruden, like Coach Woodson. I'm like asking him, like, you still about to coach? Because I already know, like, once a new coach come in, new coaches come in everywhere. So I'm like, are you still going to be our coach? He said, I'm only going to be the coach if they make me the head DB coach. Yeah. And what did Russ Wilson do? He retired because yeah. he didn't want to make him the head DB coach. And I'm just like, how do you not want to make him the head DB coach? One. And how is he already not the head DB coach in 2017? Yeah, well, who, yeah who, who was the head DB coach? His, I don't even know his full name. His name was Vs. <laughs> Vs. I was just like, who? Who is this dude? Like, I don't even. Well, know I mean, that, that's the thing. These coaches, they 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 want to micromanage everything. And I, I'm yeah. thinking, if I were to hire Rod Woodson, the last thing I need to worry about ever again was the defensive backfield. Like, that, it's oh, one thing, I'm just like, I'm good. That's taken care of. I don't yeah. have to worry about it. Hey, hey, real quick. Weird in the meetings, too. <laughs> real quick. I want to hear what you're saying. Salute to everybody. So there is an issue on YouTube today. I was told before we went live that they've been really laggy today. And that uh, Sunday ticket, a lot of people are experience, pro- experiencing problems today with YouTube. So if, if if and I was actually told by Salute to Sean, bro, you, would, you shouldn't go live today because YouTube is wilding right now. So if it is a little laggy or a little bit, it's not our fault, you guys. It is on the YouTube side of things. A lot of people's lives and shit is, is tweaking today. So it's not just ours. My, my bad, Con. I didn't mean to cut you off, bro. No, you're good. I was just about to say about the uh, the meetings. Like, uh, y'all know John Pagano. He, he ended up being the head DB coach uh, my first year. Or was that my second year? I think it was my first year. And then uh, they tried to get basically make it seem like Norton was the one making all the bad calls and all this stuff. And it was really like Del Rio and Pagano. Like they were the ones like delegating everything. Del Rio and Pagano would come in our meetings with Coach Woodson and hey, try hey. to like tell us what to do. And I remember Coach Woodson telling me like when I first got there, he was like, listen, these coaches are going to tell you this or tell you that. He was like, you just nod your head and act like you listen. He was like, but listen to me. And I'm like, of course, I'm about to listen to you. I'm about to listen to him and do what he say. Like, but he would like tell me like, they're going to try to do this or try to tell you this. He's like, don't listen to them. Listen to me. And it's like already in my head. I'm like, this is how this is about to go. Like, this is how the league is. Like coaches aren't even on the same page. But it's just like, why are you not letting him be the head DB coach one or 
letting yeah. him coach the way he wants to coach the DBs. Like he's a Hall of Famer. Like there's a reason. But it was just weird like that. And then, like I said, he retired once they didn't make him the head DB coach again. Yeah. I remember there was problems at that point, too. That's when Rob was kind of coming out talking his shit. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Not he was pissed because they had us doing dumb shit, man. Like, just dumb shit. And they would tell us, like, and in the meeting, you would just see him in the meeting go, like, why they're telling us shit. And I'm just looking at him like, yo, this is crazy. Like, they're not really not listening to a Hall of Famer. But yeah, salute to everybody in the building. Like I said, my apologies, you guys. It is YouTube on our side of things on StreamYard. We are good. I was gonna say, yeah, I, yeah. I haven't seen anything lagging or nothing. Yeah, I ain't got nothing. Real quick, John got a question for Khan. Gary on, you had a few picks for us. I personally remember a pick on the Steelers, Cardinals, and Browns. My favorite was the Mayfield pick six. You yeah, obviously that was my favorite. My first pick ever. And I got a pick six. It's crazy because I slipped on that play. I wasn't even supposed to get the ball. I just looked up and the ball was in my hands. I had to was it, oh yeah, that was that play where your leg kind of went got under you a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah. I split. we were in like cover three. It wasn't even my play. It was just like a sit down in the zone. And uh, actually, Marcus Giltris, uh, he was the one that uh, helped cause the play. And then I think it was Jarvis. He like tipped it, and then I caught the ball and got it fixed. That was definitely my favorite for sure. I tried to get I tried to get a a former teammate of yours on the show today. But I couldn't make it happen. I was trying to get Nick Nelson Nick, on. Yeah, yeah, hit me up. He yeah, was like, I was yeah. trying to get him on, but um, I know he probably got other shit going on and stuff. It would have been cool to talk to him, too, because I know you guys were in that building together and you guys went through all that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> together as a unit. Go ahead, Stu. I was going to say, who, who who do you keep up with? Do you keep up with more uh, of your college players or more of your NFL teammates? Definitely more college, but I keep up with some – NFL teammates, uh, Daryl Worley, uh, Markel Lee, like them, like my best friends. Like I talk to them damn near every day. Uh, like we got a group chat, whether it's like sending videos, funny videos or whatever. Uh, yeah, I talk to them that's cool. every day. Yeah. Um, World's still in the league too, right? Isn't he over in, um, yeah, in Baltimore, Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah. I still talk to Nick. Same thing. Um, a lot of college players though, for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think who else in the Raiders. What, uh, what, uh, I'm trying to think of some, um, some Ohio State guys from my uh, oh, you talk to hey, you talk to Claret all the time, Stu. Yeah, Claret. Yep. Claret. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah he's, he's been uh, he's been doing a lot of stuff with Cameron and uh, Mace on their yeah. on their on their deal there, their show. He's yeah. been on that show. Yeah, but that, at the blue, they're at the Blue Wire, the, the place that me and Marquette did our last interview. That's where they do uh, they do their stuff at. Oh, oh okay. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's do you stay? Do you do you do you keep in contact with Ohio State? Uh, yeah, somewhat. Uh, I had took my, my stepson, uh, my fiance, uh, my two little boys out there this summer. So I had a camp at my high school. So I was like, I definitely want to take them to see Ohio State because it was their first time ever in Ohio. So we had went up there and they showed us good uh, hospitality and everything. And you're from, you're from Ohio, right? Yeah, I'm from Maslin, Canton. How far away is that from uh, Columbus? It's like two hours. Two hours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, did you grow up? Did you grow up being an Ohio State fan? No, nah, I didn't. Man, I wanted to be in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even a football fan. I Dude, didn't know. Kyle didn't even get into football till later on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I, I committed to the team up north before I went to Ohio State. I flipped. <laughs> what? What? Uh, when? When did you? As far as that, when did you get into football? Then, like, what made you get into football? Uh, seventh grade. I don't even know what made me get into it. I just wanted to play. Uh, I always play like backyard football and stuff, but I never played like actual little league or anything. I played my first year of football, seventh grade. I played running back. Eighth grade, I played quarterback. And then my freshman year, I went to Maslin. I don't know if you know Maslin High School. Um, it sounds familiar. What? What? How, how big was it? Maslin, it's a yeah. big, big uh, football tradition. Paul Brown start uh, was like the head coach there back in the day, and gotcha. uh, he like made Maslin really known for winning like twenty state championships or something like that. Uh, so I went there my freshman year, and I quit because they had a quarterback that they said they wanted to play quarterback, and I was like, "Well, I play quarterback." So like the first day of summer workouts, they told me like you can play receiver. I'm like, "Nah," so I quit. I didn't play my freshman year. Sophomore year, I was, I went out again and I was on JV 
didn't even get in on JV. I was number 97. Like, <laughs> terrible. What was crazy is I was actually doing good against, like, the varsity. They just wouldn't give me an opportunity. And then my junior year, I ended up playing my first snap at corner. Uh, and I got an offer from Michigan, Northwestern, and a couple of Mac schools. And oh, yeah. then I committed to Michigan, like, right off rip because I'd never been a part of recruiting or anything. So I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And then all these other schools started like coming out and I was like, I want to visit them. And Brady Hulk was the coach at the time. He had a no visit policy or something like that, I guess. But they never told me that. So they just told me like, if you go visit other schools, we're going to pull your scholarship. So I took it as a threat. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to decommit. And I end up going to Ohio State uh, my, after my senior year of high school. Still, you met with Michigan too. You got to. I was going to say, I, that's funny that you, you do that because they did the same. They did the same thing to me when. It was um, my junior year. Football season was going on, yeah. and um, they're like, well, "Why? Are you, why are you looking at other schools? Why are you visiting these other schools?" <laughs> right. I'm going. Well, I just you know I get five visits, right? So I. Come, That's exactly what I. <laughs> yeah, I get five visits, so I'm like, I, I want to compare Michigan to to these other schools, and they're like, well, um, and then it was during a summer camp though, and I remember meeting with Lloyd Carr. And uh, we were talking. He's like, are you a Michigan guy? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a Michigan guy. You know, da, da, da. Well, hey, guys. Hey, I don't want to ask. I don't wanna say <laughs> Just like us, Con. Fathers. So, <laughs> you know, no, no. So, so they said, well, Stuart, why are you taking these visits? You already committed to Michigan. And I'm like, no, I didn't. And they're like, well, remember when you were sitting in Lloyd Carr's office? You verbally committed to them. I'm like. I did not do that. And they're like, what do you call Lloyd Carr a liar? And then from like, oh, like junior, 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 uh, junior December year, all the way to about two weeks before signing date, they like called me back. But I'm going, dude, you're looking at other safeties. I know I'm not the only safety that you're, you're going after. So I'm, right. you know, I get, I get visits. So let me go in. Yeah. They want people to commit early. Yeah. That's exactly what they did. They to don't me. have to fucking worry about us. <laughs> Hey, salute to Q real quick. And I, we kind of we kind of touched on the whole topic of AB on the last podcast. If you guys don't get a chance to, if you get a chance to, go check out the last uh, previous podcast I did with Khan. But he wants to know what was it like going against uh, AB? Man, it was great to go against him. Uh, like I was telling my players the other day, like he's probably one of the best receivers I ever went against off the line. Like he's damn near – impossible to get a hand on like it's it's hard to get a hand on him off the line he's so quick off the line yeah. he's a great player uh for sure um uh, but i love going against him it made me better for sure just a terrible teammate salute the mex <laughs> uh, what was the real reason they didn't want to keep playing you because you played good but again the injuries i feel why like that wasn't the real me? reason why they didn't want to play me yeah. like put me in the game yeah i was I mean, it got to the point where it was just like a personal thing. I think they didn't like me because I told them I didn't like them. Uh, but it was just I didn't agree with the way they coached. And they just didn't like it, I guess. Like yeah. I said, they wanted me to be like every corner that he said he wanted all their corners to look the same. I'm not the same as every corner. I play different. And it's like we can, like I said, if we're going in, we can talk. We can meet to a mutual agreement. But it's yeah. just like he already came in and established that as soon as he got there. Like, I want all my corners to look the same. Never ask for any advice or input from the players. As soon as you do that, it's already like tension built up, like I said. And then I was uh, get to the point where I was talking about 2018, where I wasn't playing in some of those games. Like, if I was doing good, like I said, in the Miami game, I was balling. I had like three PBUs and almost had a pick. Um, and he didn't even play me the fourth quarter because I got one catch on me like a 15 yard out. And it's just like, at that point, it's like, why are you taking me out? That's yeah. gotta be personal. Cause I'm playing good the whole game. And this is like, and it's crazy. Not, I'm not even gonna say the name, but my boy, he ended up giving up a touchdown like two plays later and he don't get taken out. And it's like, I'm thinking I'm about to go back in. Cause it's like, Oh, I got taken out. Cause I gave up a 15 yard out. Yeah. He gave up a touchdown in a crucial moment in the game. He about to get taken out, but I still don't go in. And it's just like, all right. Definitely so, personal. I think they yeah. felt your energy. And you, know and you knew their energy, and it just it just didn't it didn't work well. Salute to John. I like this right here. Tough question incoming. What was the moment in your mind that defined your pro career? Vice versa, what was the moment you knew you had to step away? I think stepping away means was was the injury right? That was the injury. Like, are you saying you, like 
I thought you meant like stepping away, like I'm done. Like I ain't no, done. no, because yeah, because nah, he, he's still he's still rehab. Well, he's pretty much ready to get yeah. back into the league at this point. Yeah, but I'm he's good, been rehabbing. Man. But I think he meant like I don't know, because the injury was the was was the real defining moment of stepping away, right? Yeah, that's why I haven't been playing for sure. I've been rehabbing for three years because how how do you fix a problem that you don't know? Like I've had four guest surgeries on what my what my pain was in my leg and none of them happened to fix anything. So yeah. I was coming back from that. I ended up finding out I had nerve damage uh, last, that I was April of 2022, yeah, last year. So mm-hmm. I found out I have nerve damage last year and that can take, like I still have the pain, but they said that yeah. can take up to a year, two years or never could come back the same. So that was the reason why I stepped away as far as that, because my injury, but was there was there a specific moment in that that you feel defined your career, whether it was on the field or off the field? Was it a conversation with Gruden where you felt maybe you you know you were jettisoned and it was like okay now that it's very tough to come back from this, or was it a moment on the field? The where define, you felt, like did it define your career as a as a whole? Was there like one moment where oh, you like? Oh, uh, I feel like me being traded really defined. I feel like that boosted my confidence back to where I was because I feel like I have I feel like any player has the most confidence from that year of going from college to the league because it's like you make it to the league you get in that first game and you're like well I'm really in the league like I made it to where a lot of people didn't make it to so that builds that's like one of the highest points of confidence I feel like for me was yeah and then it got to the point as my career I feel like I was losing that confidence somewhere somehow or just not being that confident and not believing in myself because of whatever was going on but when i got traded like i tell people all the time i had the worst eight games in my career of 2019 for the raiders yeah statistically and then i got traded to houston mind you i got traded on monday played against the raiders sunday made the game win and play on defense yeah to win the game and beat them and then statistically i had my best eight games in my career for the texans or nine games because we ended up going to the playoffs yeah, I had my best nine games in the same career that I had my worst eight yeah. games statistically. Like, how does that happen? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. That's because of the environment I was in. And it's just like to go from that to do that. I feel like that boosted my confidence back to where I was when I got drafted and cool. when I was at Ohio State playing. So I feel like that defined my football career for sure. I, I got a question, and this is for both of you guys at this point. And still, look, bro, we know kids are kids, man. Let them do their thing. It is, it's all good. You're not, it's not messing up the show, brother. You're good. All right. I got a question because you guys, you guys are both, you know, you went to a historic franchise with the Raiders, getting drafted in the first round and third round, respectfully, right? I, I asked you this because there's so many new athletes now in, in, in the modern era now, young kids coming up and, and Con, you're working with a bunch of them. Like, you guys had the term first round bust, third round bust, so on and so forth. And now that this this is a world now where there's so many trolls that are literally eliminating a lot of these guys' confidence before they even get a chance to even build up that confidence going into the collegiate level or even the NFL. Like, how would you tell these guys coming up how to how to deal with the with the stigma, the so you know, of, of so-called being the NFL plus because both of you guys played at a very high level at the college level. The NFL was a different beast, but both of you guys still at some point played at a high level in the NFL, also, right? But it, but it's easy to say third round, first round, oh man, that you know, so it's easy to throw a label on you guys because of where you guys were drafted. And right. Stu, you specifically being an Al Davis guy, Al Davis specifically went and got you. So that makes that third round bust even more because it was Al guy. Like, how would you guys, I'm going to start with Stu. How would you tell these kids how to deal with that shit? Because Stu, for a while, you got away from the Raider world because yeah. of how you were treated by the fans and by the national media and all that other shit. You were like, fuck it, I'm done with this shit. Like, I don't want nothing to do with it. Like, how would you tell these kids coming up in the world how to, how to, how to deal with that? <clears throat> oh, I mean, I, I, I guess... I've kind of dealt with it my since probably high school, you know what I mean? When kind of the beginning of the internet first started coming out, I remember there were, there were uh, message boards that, you know, teams were playing in high school and, you know, people were saying stuff about it. And I don't know if you can really, I, w- I would just say, don't, you know, 
don't look at it, I guess. You know what I mean? Don't even worry about it. You know, I mean, it's not going to find a way to play on Sunday. I mean, it's all it's going to do is because we know this, right? No one likes, no one likes good news. Everyone, everyone wants to, you know, everyone wants to be negative. So I just think if you're, if you're going through that stuff, it's just going to put you in a negative mindset that you just, it's regardless if, if, if you read that or not, it's not going to affect how you're going to play. Right. So it's, I, I just, I, I guess too. I mean, I don't know. I mean, people are more sensitive nowadays too. So yeah. you know, I <laughs> like, you know, some of these kids, it's like, everyone's got to be cool with each other and stuff. And it, like, it's okay to, 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 to not bad mouth somebody, but if they're not playing good, you know, fucking call yeah. out on it, you know, yeah, for sure. You know, I so agree. I think, I don't, I mean, I, I guess what would, I would just say, uh, just try to just ignore it, you know, and here's the deal. And, and I'm sure you can attest to this. Um, it's the one or two assholes that take away from, you know, the thousands of people who actually are, you yeah. know, positive and the people yeah. that are cheering for you. And it's a couple, you know, a couple pricks that wrote a couple of different things that you focus on. Right. I mean, cause yeah. when you're watching film, right. We, we don't ever talk about the good things. We talk about the corrections. I need to right. see what the corrections are. Well, so, well, everybody's not like you guys also because people to show you love on social media, you guys will share it. I know Khan, you're a, a, a huge, huge advocate for positive energy. That's, that's how I am, bro. Like I don't allow anything negative in my world because I, I know that could shake it up. Yeah, but yeah. like the problem is these days, these, these athletes only respond to bullshit. A lot of these guys will only respond to the negative. So they, so these guys go out there and say negative shit because that's the only way they can get a reaction. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I've seen you still share numerous positive shit that's been said about you. Khan shares nothing but positive shit also yeah. on Instagram and Twitter. I think that that that's something also that a lot of these young guys can do moving forward is share more of the love. Because, you know, there is way more love than there's hatred. But also, oh, if, they know that, if they can garner some type of reaction out of you, they're going to do it. Right, Con? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like Stu said, man, people focus on the negative. It's yep. just like those it's those thousand people that are positive and it's one or two that's negative. But you focus on that. And it's just like, why? Like, you have to structure your mindset to focus on the positive shit. And as far as the, gen the younger generation, it's that like everybody hates me mentality when you got so many people that actually love you it's just yeah. like they want to make it seem like they're struggling so hard with haters or fighting demons and it's like you ever see this shit that says fighting demons like bro you ain't fighting no demons like you live in a fucking five bedroom home you got two cars in the driveway you got two parents like what demons are you fighting bro? yeah like, yep. you know, <laughs> like it's so many like posers out here that just act like oh i'm talking i see like people like for instance, I got sisters or brothers that talk about all oh, my haters and not. Da, da, da. I'm like, bro, you don't have no haters. I know who you <laughs> are. Like, you're, you're my little brother. You're my little sister. Like, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm showing you love. We got 13 of us, damn near. Like, in our family, it's 13 of my brothers and sisters. We're all showing love. We're all supporting. You don't have no haters. Like, you're just trying to make it seem like that. So. It could seem like you're coming up off of something or you're like making a way off of struggling so hard. Like, no, bro, you're just going through shit like everybody else is. And you just need to find a way to get through it without saying like, I got haters or I got demons or this, this and that. Like, yeah, focusing on the negative, like he said, it's just like, you don't got to do that. Like, this kid, well, I, I think too, I mean, I'm the older guy here. I mean, life is short. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. It's way too short to be messing around with things that don't make you feel good or make you happy or inspire you. Like if there's some negative shit, man, like I'm, I don't want nothing to do with it. Exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? I feel that. And like you, like I think, like you're saying, is that some of these people, I think, they get um to where, uh, what would you say? They're they're, what's the term I'm trying to think of here? I think they kind of take take things for granted and they don't realize like yeah, like you said, like the, the things that's good in their life and acknowledging that type of stuff, you know. So yeah. um again, I, I I just like I just like it to be around positive people. Yeah, yeah I no, feel no. that I definitely surround myself, like you said. It's crazy because I didn't unfollow I think I unfollow hey some guys, homies from back home down. like okay. at least like once a month. Like I've, I see myself unfollowing people I used to hang with 
Like, yeah. And that's just like, I, it ain't no beef or nothing. I just, you're not posting or sh- like doing anything that's positive or like that's going to like, yeah. that I even want to share. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're just posting and kicking it in the club or posting like girls shaking their ass and all this. Shit. Like, I don't, I don't want to see that. Like, I got a fiance, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just scrolling through my fucking Instagram and she just having to sit by you just, you just see some ass. Like, like, what the, what are you, and this is like, and, yeah. and my a younger me, like, I would be like, man, you tripping like that, but it's just like, no, nah, she don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see that. It's like, what does that have to do with our relationship? Like, how is yeah. that going to make me a better father, a better football player, or a better uh, husband? Like, it just doesn't. So, I, I got to the point where I'm, I just cut out all the negativity. I don't care if you, family, friends, if if you drowning yeah. me out, like you gotta go, like and come back around if you feel like. But I got to the point where people like they don't even want to be around me, like like that, like. Players, I got players that just don't come to workouts no more. Like, and I've never told them they couldn't come back. They just they don't want to be around me or the players that have been working out hard or anything because they don't feel comfortable. And it's like I put that environment on so many people, family, friends, players. Yeah. That environment is gonna I'm gonna be so positive that if you're negative, you don't want to be around me. Yeah. Yeah, you just eliminate all toxicity, point yeah. blank, period. And then you can't say shit about it, like, oh, he don't fuck with me. I never said I didn't want to fuck with you. You just stopped yeah. coming around because you clearly didn't want to level up or be yep. positive. You know yep. Yeah. I, I want to ask you guys this. How, how do you guys still maintain your love for the game? And, and, and I know that football changed both of you guys' lives. You guys wouldn't have, you know, a lot of the relationships or even the finances without this game. But 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 then you go through a lot of bullshit like Khan, you know, the whole bullshit rape case where you where you lost a lot of money because yeah. of it. And, and, yeah, and, what a fuck, dude. I'm so yeah. sorry you went through that fucking bullshit, yeah. man. Personal that, attack. Personal dude, attack, that right? It makes me so f- oh my still, god, man. Still dude. you till this day you deal with brain injuries that, you know, where you had to leave that alone and and you you got you can kind of go into detail with Khan if you want to. You 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 know, you had to go through the NFL and go through all kind of crazy shit in order to be, you know, where you are today. Kind of, I don't know if you know, but you know, he had to go through the whole protocol of, you know, um, well, what, what, yeah, what was the NFL it? concussion lawsuit? And I was awarded, I was awarded total and permanent disability through the NFL about three years ago. Yeah. Um, right. I had over, I had over 60 concussions when I played over 60. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Bro. But like, like, see with that, like, how do you guys still maintain the love of wild, the game bro. because it was so much great shit that happened to y'all, but also so much bullshit that comes with this. You get into the NFL, Gruden's your head coach, shit goes haywire, you're out of there, you get injuries. I mean, don't get me wrong, life is gonna build you up and beat you, beat you back down. I mean, it's it's part of life, yeah. but like this is something that you guys both came up from the sandbox and playing the game. Like, like, yeah. how do you maintain the love? Is, is it just like like we said, kind of like with the negative and the positive? Is it is it just the love just outweighs? Yeah. The I hate like, for this because you know you still do a lot con for, for the youth with football. You're still trying to make your way back into the NFL. Stu is with me every week talking about the game, you yeah. know, and, and we do this all the time. Like, how do you guys continue to still have the love for this game with all the bullshit that came with it? Yeah, I feel like as far as what you said at the end, like it just outweighs the positive, outweighs the negative, and you just try to make it. I'm always thinking about other people, like. So I'm just trying to make it better for other people. So like I tell all my players, I think they're a big reason of why uh, I still like love the game. Obviously, I'm trying to get back. So yeah. I still love to compete. But as far as being around them and to show them what I learned on the way through this experience, like you said, all the positive, all the negatives, all that shit, yeah. I can guide them and give back knowledge. Just it's not nothing tangible. It's just knowledge. Like on if they go through college if they go through if they make it to the nfl like i can give back all that shit that i went through and make it a more positive experience for them like yeah. that's i yeah. feel like that's what my legacy is to make other people's lives and impact other people's lives so i feel like I, just I like thinking that. about it like that i think i just love the game even more like that yeah and Stu, i know like you met your wife through what you got going on like like your whole world was like was was built on you but the foundation of football right like yeah 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 i mean i mean football is what brought me to purdue and that's where i met my wife and that's where we live now you know so i mean without without football i mean 
I wouldn't have been down here. I wouldn't have come down here. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a, a very uh, a, important thing, but what you're, I think you're going to ask a question though. Well, I, I was, cause we're, we're talking about like the, the shit that comes with this. Right. And we, we talked, we, we talked previously and I love that kind of so open about that whole rape case that ended up being bullshit. But what what did Reggie McKenzie say to you, Con? Like that 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 like because I know you spoke with other GMs and other guys during that process, right? Like, was there something during that the rape case with? process? Yeah, like like well, I didn't speak to anybody. Oh, during the draft, like oh during the draft, yeah. But like, yeah, like once I once the case and shit came out, like I didn't nobody hit me up nothing. So it was just like everybody was just doing their their background checks or their due diligence, their research or whatever, and he just happened to be the one to like just go out on a limb and give me opportunity. But when I got to the Raiders, I remember he explained like he didn't believe it. I mean, of course he said, of course, like I work for an organization. I can't just say yeah. it just because I believe it. I have to do research and yeah. whatever. Um, but he was just saying like, he never believed it the whole time and that he did his due diligence, his research. And he knew like he was getting a steal because everybody else was going to pass up and not even take the chance. And he was like, it wasn't even about like the, the case itself. It was about the character because he knew the person that I was and like heard from other people. Cause like, I didn't even talk to the Raiders during the, the combine process. So it was just like, uh, I was going to say, I, I didn't, I, yeah. that was the, the one team I like didn't even hear from at all or anything. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just like, he he went off of other people who've known me, coaches, players, teachers, whatever. Like, and just like you do all your research and see who this person is. It's just like at the end of the day, the case wasn't even over. I didn't finish the case, the criminal part of it, till after the season. So it's like he really took a chance on me because of word of mouth and who he heard I was as a person. So yeah. like that that definitely like changed my perspective on people as well. Like and, that, and is that another reason also because you know cutting out all the toxicity and shit? I, I know that situation definitely yeah. like like built built the character that you have now, right? Like yeah. I just refuse because you know this is the scary thing about life, and we talk about everything over here on these podcasts and shit. But it's like it's scary, mm -hmm. man. Stu can walk outside to go check the mail, and, and somebody sees him, they say, "I don't like him." So yeah. I'm bullshit, and, right. and, and and that completely ruins his reputation same right. thing to me. i could be walking through the mall with my wife and somebody says oh he said something or or he tried to do this and then it, it completely just derails your life right. off bullshit <laughs> you know what i'm saying like like so for you to oh, still man, be man. as positive and as optimistic about life after that bro is such a it's, 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 a, it's a, like to me a defining moment of who you are it's like damn bro like you continue to build as a man outside of football and become who you are now because of situations like that. Like a lot of people wouldn't have came back from that, huh? Like real yeah. shit. Most, most people wouldn't have, wouldn't have came back from that shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like real told. talk. Yeah, you know what I mean? man. But I, I can't. There's just something in me where I just, I can't fold. And that's what I try to just build in other people. Like not even just kids, like my fiance, my mom, anybody I talk to, my cousins, like, I'm just trying to build that in other people because I know everybody doesn't think or acts like me, but I feel like everybody's capable of getting through everything. So I just always try to build that with anybody that I, I come across in life. I like that, man. I love it, man. Positivity. I mean, that's that's the only way you can go about life because this shit is already hard enough as is. I, mm -hmm. I realized this past year or so, you know, through my transition in life, like it's like, I've cut out so many people that I even grew up in a sandbox with because they're just not trying to level up in, in, in all aspects of life, yeah. all aspects. And, and at, usually back then it would hurt. You cut somebody off. You don't talk to them for a week or two. You right back into it, right? You buy right into back right into the bullshit. At yeah. this age in my life, it's just so easy to cut people off now because it's like, oh, we're <laughs> not on the same page, bro. We're just not. Really. You know what I mean? I don't care who you are. Like, like you said, family. Like I got sisters and, and and brothers I don't even speak to because of the negative shit that comes along with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I mean, hey, man, it is what it is. If, like you said, family or not, whatever. Like you go through certain shit in your life to get to this point. And um, right. bro, I, I love the way you 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 know what I'm saying you you carry yourself through something like that because not a lot of people will be able to come back from that type of shit, bro. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I was telling Stu behind the scenes, like we're gonna do this show and. 
this is what, you know, what, one of the situations that happened, I said, I said, if you got some questions or you want to, and I said, Khan is open about talking about everything. You know what I'm Hell saying? Yeah. I'll it, talk it, about it. I was waiting for the case to be over so I could talk about it because legally I couldn't. And it was yeah. like, I, I, I want to do a documentary, everything. Like, yeah, that shit's crazy. Like, I went through five years of that shit for a lie. Yeah. Crazy. But I'm it, definitely open to talk about it. Anything. Like, I'm still, for he, sure. You know, it's funny. Kyle won and then sued the woman and only wanted, he, he got $300. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds about right. Because it wasn't about the money. No, no. no. It wasn't about the, it wasn't even just wasn't about the money. It was no, no, clear, yeah, clear my name. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need that. Um, so well, I mean, I mean, that 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 whole thing, man. I, I know there. I I heard a story of a kid. Um, was he out? In, he was out in California, and the same thing happened. But you know, mm -hmm. he 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 got accused of of that, and you know, went to jail, and that way he couldn't go and play college ball and all this stuff, and it's. It's so terrible that somebody would put somebody else in a situation like that, especially when we only have so many years to physically be able to play. And mm -hmm. when you take those away, man. I mean, that's fucking that's like our that's everything to us. You know what I mean? So yeah. for someone to out of spite or hate and, and, and do that and and it, it just it makes me absolutely sick. And um I I, I give you a lot of praise on being able to come back from that shit and you know yeah keep going with it because it could like you said it could be a deal where you you're like man this you know like is it is it is it worth it to move on is it whatever you know so i, I give you credit man and most people wouldn't even fight most people wouldn't have fought they would have just like this yeah, is they tried to get me to settle a couple yeah times. i was like nah i'm cool and then That's the settlement, they she was trying to get me to settle for like five million. Then she dropped it down to like two million. I'm like, man, this is crazy. <laughs> that shit is insane. Real quick, man, kind of change your gears. Have you spoke since our last pod? We we kind of talked about Damon Arnett a little bit. You yeah. know, you know, you, I know you consider him like little bro, Ohio State connection. Is it has mm -hmm. it been any dialogue with him up to this point? Have you spoke with him? It's crazy. I hate I hit him up. I posted, I literally just posted like a black picture and i just wrote a caption on my story instagram story like a month ago and i was like if anybody's talked to damon or got his number or whatever like send it to me or just tell him i'm trying to hit him up and he responded and he hit me up and he sent me his number and i had texted him uh and he was just like bro i miss you whatever and i was like i miss you too bro i've been trying to get in contact with you or whatever and i was like bro just hit me up like if you ever want to talk or anything and he was like bro like i'm gonna call you and he's never called me so that was the last time i spoke to him but but for him to even say that that's yeah. really cool like you can tell he's actually going through something and at some point he'll probably he'll yeah. probably give you that call man because for yeah. him to even say like i miss you bro and all you could tell you know what i mean you could tell and i'm hoping that he can get back into the league as well we're talking about a, a, another former first round pick out of ohio state Stu, uh damon arnett that we got oh, remember yeah I know, I, I know who he is yeah yeah Absolutely. I'm my dog, man. And I tell him to his face, just like I'm about to say, like, you know, he fucked up doing some dumb ass shit. But it is what it is. But he just got to find himself or seek the help that people are trying to give him and not try to push it off. Uh, whatever that is for him, he got to figure it out for sure. But like I always said, I'm here for you. If you see this or hear this or anybody that can tell him. But yeah. just it, gotta, it just sucks. It sucks, man, because it's like you don't realize when you're living your own life, like like Damon Arnett, former first round pick, you don't realize that not most people most people aren't afforded the luxury of playing the game and making that kind of money because you're just living in your own world. So you're not yeah. you're not thinking about man, yeah. this person wish they would be in my footstep. This person would you don't really care. You're like, well, whatever, this is my life. I'm living it, blah, blah, blah. Like that's kind of tough to like jump out of your, your your own mindset and say, "Yo, let me look outside the and, and just how am I fucking up? How am I fumbling this opportunity?" You know, some of us. I mean, you get those. I don't know, man. I feel like it's you'll get a rare case where people don't have like the best parents or both parents yeah. or whatever, and they yeah. just understand it. But I just feel like it comes from the home. Like ninety percent of the time, it's the home. Like. Yeah, I had a great mom. She's a strong woman. 
she's a superwoman. She showed me how to be a man. But at the end of the day, she's not a man. I yeah. have her male figure. All my male figures went to jail. Like all my male figures sold yeah. drugs or whatever. And it's just like when I get to college or I'm first person to graduate college in my family, uh, first person to make it to the league or to make it to that statue, that statue or have that much money. So how does anybody tell me how to manage that money? How does anybody tell me what's coming from having money, success, any of that? So it's just like not having that. It's just like I'm not, I wasn't a bad person or doing like crazy dumb shit. But it was just like, like you said, I'm at that point where I'm like in a lifestyle. It's just like I'm not thinking about people want to be in my shoes. People want to do it. I'm not thinking that I don't have that awareness to think of it like that because I'm just going day by day trying to play football. It's yeah. just like you don't realize it until it's gone. Like when I'm stepping away from it, from my injuries and everything, I start being a more positive person. And not that I wasn't positive, but I started looking at things more positively and surrounding myself with more positive shit. And like just the people I had around me, like even if I was a positive person, like I had negative people around me. Yeah. I always wanted to kick, always wanted to drink, always wanted to go with girls and do this and do that. It's like, how's that helping me continue to be this player and be on this platform that I've worked so hard to get to? Like, yeah, I had to understand that, but not having a dad or having parents or people around you to help you like that, it's hard to yeah. look out and see that shit while you have it. I and used to think, uh, I used to think, huh? Because I grew up without a mother and father. My grandmother raised me my whole life, right? And I yeah. used to think, feel bad for yourself, feel sorry for yourself, feel sorry for yourself, until yeah. I adapted the the mindset of that's a super that's a superpower of mine. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like for me to be where I am in life now, married, kids, home, like, and do all this without that kind of guidance, it's yeah. a superpower, bro. Like, like for yeah, you to yeah. get into the NFL without a father, that right. is a superpower, bro. Like that, that's yeah. unheard of. Stu, you know, you grew up with your mother, your mother, your father, but you also had different circumstances around you as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? So it, it, it's hard to overcome that kind of shit, but that's a super, like, I, I want people to realize. That's a superpower. Like I used to feel bad for myself. I, I used to drink a lot more because of that. I feel bad yeah. for myself. Why did I not have this? Why did I not have that? Why was I not afforded the luxury of doing this? And it's like, man, yeah. once you get over that mindset, bro, it's like, man, look, I, look I'm, I'm attacking life. I only live once. I, I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna go after everything I want. And yeah. I'm realizing that you know a lot of the shit that I used to do was in my way, and that's why it took me longer to get to where I am now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I so. That. I applaud you, bro, for, for being able to get to that level, you know, without the father, fa father in your life. I, I yeah. want to ask you this real quick. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I just want to say, I just want to say that uh, I, I'm thinking of that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I watched it and, and took a lot of my dad's character traits as a father, right? And watching and how do you know how to be a father when you don't have a father around, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So who do you turn to? Uh, who, who did you go to for guidance? You know, I mean, because... Yeah. Like you said you didn't have a, a a dad, but you was there a male figure that you somewhat went to as a mentor or uh it's crazy because oh my dad was in my life, he just wasn't there. Oh okay. like, yeah, he was there, but he wasn't present. Like yeah. I just see him do so much fucked up shit. And when him and my stepmom, my second stepmom got divorced, I ended up staying with her instead of staying with him like that's how you know it's like me and him just weren't there yeah, yeah but i feel like i didn't really have anybody to look up to or show me how to be a father or be a man it was just i had to make a mind well my mom really was but i had to make a mindset of doing what not or knowing what not to do is what helped me learn what to do so like seeing him yeah do but what, shit, how'd you know how'd you know what not to do if you didn't have anyone you know what i mean because all his kids didn't like him my dad has that i know of my dad has 13 kids i'm the okay. oldest he probably has 14 or 15 and none of them talk to him the only one that talks to him is the one that lives with him my youngest brother and it's just like that's how i figured out it was the wrong shit because it's yeah. like none of none of his kids wanted to talk to him none of his kids like wanted them to be wanted him to be a part of anything in their lives and it's just like at that point i realized and i was i was grown up damn near by what 13 14 because i was taking care of my youngest brother at the time he's a newborn baby when my dad went to jail and my stepmom had to work so i was taking care of a kid already like yeah 
a, a baby, like a newborn baby at 13. Yeah. So it's like I grew up quick and I seen as I grew older, like none of us wanted to talk to him. None of them to be around him. Just like that's what I don't want to be like. So I know how to be a good dad. And I wasn't a good dad at first when I got to the league. Like I can attest to that. Like I thought like buying my kids stuff and just like having them around to post the pictures of them or whatever. Like I would like have my mom watch them and I would go kicking and stuff. And it's like, I wasn't being a good dad. I thought by just being there, like I was being a good dad. So I learned as far as being myself uh, and fucking up as well. Like, cause I wanted so hard to be not like my dad Yeah, know, that I was just like thinking like the little shit was doing good enough because I had my son because yeah. I would bring him to my mom's house, but I would go kick it. Like it was cool. Cause I got him like, He's at yeah. my mom's house. It's just like, nah, like you starting to do shit like your dad. Like, so now I, I got to even be better than that. And it's not even worrying about what he didn't do. Just be better because you want to be a good dad. So I feel like that's what really helped me. But there was really no male figure or men that helped me do that. I, I, I love I love the uh, transparency, man. I, I love it. Um, real quick, Stu, I want to ask you this. Is the OG right now on the screen? With with you know, Con <laughs> oh, oh, how old is he? Man? You. You know, he's, he's, I'm, like, I'm forty. I'm forty two. I'm forty two. That ain't old. You getting younger? I, I, he's, <laughs> you know, I, I got to He's only three years older than me. You know what I'm saying? But I got to I got to use that because usually I'm the oldest dude on the screen, so it feels good yeah. across the else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but for for Con, you know, what I'm saying rehabbing right now and getting closer and closer to being able to get back into the league right now. Um, real quick, you know, I know his agent, they're, they're taking calls at this point. Like it's time to get back. What, what kind of, what kind of, you know, what, what could you give Khan in terms of getting back into the league? Some, some type of knowledge, you know what I mean? Cause I, I look, and I'm not trying to be here to, to have you school them. Cause I mean, you guys no, are both no, grown no, back no, men, no. I mean, but you've been there. You, 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 you bounced around the league after the Raiders and, and played for a few franchises. Is there any kind of game you, you, you could shoot Khan in terms of him getting back into the league? I, I, I do know this. I know it's tough. It, it's it's because you literally go from NFL facilities and workouts to you're at like your local high school working out. You know what I mean? In my they're, garage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You're not there. Like there's not like a um, minor league for football. You're either playing or you're on the couch and there's right. really nothing in between. So it, I, I would just say it, it's hard. What I, what I used to do is I used to, um, I remember I dropped my, my, she's my oldest now, but I drop her off at, um, preschool at eight 30. And I go to the, I go to the local high school there in Hemlock where I lived. And I would go through like, like an individual period. And then in my mind, I'm going through like a Skelly period and like a team period and just trying to keep me on that regular schedule of like practice and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's tough, dude. It, 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 it It's hard, you know? Um, and, and, and again, for us, um, it, like you, how do I say it? Like, I mean, every year you're out, it's just, it, it, it makes it that much like harder for you to get your one, get your body right back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, we age very quickly in the NFL and, how long have you been out now? Shit, it damn near be three years now. Three years, and, and what yeah. what what was your injury? I I, don't, I wasn't sure on that. So I ended up having nerve damage. Um, I think it came from just trauma of my leg, having surgery, putting a rod in my leg. I got a rod in my leg for did you, a stress did you fracture. Break, did you break your leg then? No, or? I had a stress fracture and got a rod. I never should have got the rod in and, my and leg. That was in the pros or out in college. Yeah. That was my first year in the league. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I should have never got it. Me being a first round draft pick and obviously I want to play. And then the coaches and the people are trying to get me to play, come back sooner to like get the rod and me not having a mentor or guidance is just like, I'm like, I'm so there, this there, was, there wasn't an older <laughs> teammate at all. There wasn't an older veteran in the They just said get a second opinion, which I did. But the second opinion said the same thing. But it's it's no, weird. I, I mean, as far as like a like a older player at all, there wasn't really a older mentor player that was on the team or oh yeah, Reggie Nelson. Yeah, but I feel like once I don't know, man. It was just so much like 
everybody for their self type yeah. shit there. Man. But Reggie was dealing with some shit too, Con. Yeah. 2016, he had a major year, went to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. In 2017, it, it kind of came back down. He came back down to reality. He was getting up there in age and he was getting mm-hmm. torched. You know what I mean? Like he would make big plays and then yeah. he would give up big plays. And mind you, he was up yeah. there in age. So, I mean, like, like I wasn't expecting Reggie Nelson to be the old Reggie Nelson of the Cincinnati Bengals. He knew the defense, Pauly G came over, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I'm not saying, and I don't mean, this is no disrespect to Reggie. I was a huge fan of him. I loved, loved his game. But even him, like, like you said, he was fighting for his yeah. name at that it's point. Favorite, yeah. I feel like everybody was just not, not to say like they were selfish. It was just like, everybody was trying to keep their job. Like, so yeah. they weren't really worried about being a mentor or anything because that was the environment that Gruden brought in. Like, yeah. that people did. He got rid of everybody. Like, it yeah. was crazy. So everybody man. was just on eggshells, huh? Everyone yeah. Was just, yeah. That's how the program felt, man. And it was like, <laughs> me wanting to come back. And that was during Del Rio's era when I was trying to come back. But it was even the same thing then. Like, yeah. you got Rod Woodson on eggshells. He wants to be the coach. He should be the coach. You got veterans that are getting pulled from the game that should be playing or shouldn't be playing or whatever and then you got coaches like trying to get rid of players and yep. trying to force people to play like me or like i remember i think reggie had an injury that year and they were trying to like put him on ir and he like didn't have like that bad of an injury he wanted to stay playing they forced him on ir or something like that it was just a lot of shit going on so nobody yeah. really told me they just told me like get a second opinion whatever but my second opinion happened to be a doctor that did surgery on the uh, H Rod. He was the trainer. I don't know. If oh yeah, H Rod. Hell yeah, man. Is he still the you trainer? H- remember H Rod? He had the white hair. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. cool as a person, but like he ended up being the doctor that did surgery on him. So like, I'm I'm big on like theories and shit. But I'm like, was Doctor like Alba? Was, was Doctor Alba still alive when you were out there? Nah, I think it was Doctor Keen or something like Keen? that. Okay. Okay. Uh. But he was the first opinion, obviously. And then the second opinion was Dr. Porter. But he did surgery on HR. So I'm like, I feel like that wasn't even a second opinion. I feel like he like told him or something like, yeah. which he might have not or he might have. But just like in my head, I'm like, man, he probably told him, like, tell him he needs the surgery. Da, da, da. He was like, yeah, I got back to rehab in Oakland. He's like, you like Dr. Porter? I'm like, yeah, he was cool. He's like, yeah, he did surgery on my. And I'm like, wait, so you know him like that? Like. So yeah, I told him to tell me that, that I should get the surgery, but come to find out, like I had a stress fracture. It wasn't a break. It was literally like if you look at the little slit on your finger, like yeah. it was like that. Like it was painful as shit, but it's just like it was a stress fracture. I shouldn't get a whole rod in my leg to fix a stress fracture. I should have let it heal on its own. But hey, hey what do you think of those facilities at twelve twenty Harbor Bay Parkway, man? Oh man. <laughs> hey, it was tough sledding out there, bro. It is, bro. <laughs> we, hey, we had. I, did you have like the taco crew that would come in? Like, yeah, yeah. I tried it once, never again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, we didn't have a kitchen. We didn't like. They had to bring food in, and if you didn't eat by like, like if you didn't get lunch when lunch was there, like you didn't. Oh eat yeah, it was gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah, gone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, had, um, I love that you guys both had that time in Oakland. Like, yeah. So where'd you live? Where where'd you live when you were in? Uh, I Alabama? lived in uh, Dublin. You lived in Dublin. Yeah. They had that Hooters out there, man. Me and me and Gerard Cooper used to go out there. That thing, bro. <laughs> Dublin is. I love Dublin, bro. DC. Yeah. DC lived out there. Derek moved out there in Dublin. Yeah, Dublin's there. nice. It's right up in the hills. Yeah. yeah it's I'm nice. It's Dublin. nice. I that shit is funny. expensive as fuck. Expensive as shit. Man, but, California in general. Like, yeah. How you like living in Texas? I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Me too. When I got traded. I'm looking at that like, man, I'm saving just thirty five hundred just Ooh, by moving shit, to Texas. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that, what, one question also, and I got one more after this. Uh, Money wise, you guys both, you know. Did your thing first round pick, third round pick. Stu was in the league, what eight years, nine years? I, I got well, I got six in the NFL and three in the U.S. Three in the U.S. Yeah, you, but well, you played the game for a long time. And, and, and how how would you tell these young kids now in the league to protect their funds? Because I know I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not in y'all bank accounts, but I know that you guys are responsible men, and that's that says a lot with Stu because this I, 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 I think I think yeah, I, being I, around Stu, he's the most irresponsible motherfucker in the world. You're, you're, <laughs> 
<laughs> but, I, I've done some dumb shit. Trust but, me. Well, I'm going to say this. Well, my time being around Stu, I've never seen you out there irresponsibly spend money. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, maybe one time you did say, yo, Graf, you in Vegas right now? Fuck it. I'm about to book, I'm about to book a flight right now. <laughs> but but I will say this. You guys still. You and, know, I, and I did. And I flew out there with only a suitcase full of throwback jerseys. That was it. I had no underwear, <laughs> no socks, nothing. Yep. Yep. And like, you actually gave me one of the jerseys, I think. Oh, no, that was the second time. That was the next time. I'm tripping. But but how would you tell these young kids, man, how, how, how to take care of their, uh, you know, their, their chicken, man? You know what I'm saying? You, like Marshall and Lynch say? You know, protect your chicken. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I mean, like, how- as far as me, like he said, I, I've I've done some dumb shit for sure <laughs> early on. Uh, my 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 financial situation was a little unique because I was going through child support. I yeah. was going through being in the league, not knowing how to even manage money like that. So I was blowing money, and then I got bills, and then I got child support, and then I got lawyer fees because of the rape case and yeah it's just a well, lot what, of when you say blowing money. money what were you what would you like to spend money on oh car oh well i bought an audi r8 that was my first purchase Hell yeah uh that was my dream car so i wanted that <laughs> bought that that was like a hundred where's, that, where, where's it at now where's that thing at now i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> i sold that shit literally what a year after, two years after. Oh, I was hoping you crashed that bitch. <laughs> and, uh, I got a ticket in Oakland for it. Uh, on 880, I was going like, I don't even know. I was going like 170, I think, bro. Dude, dude. Hey, these days, they would have threw you under the jail on, yeah. on social media. Nah, he was telling me. Like, uh, I should be Howard. Jail. But, oh, yeah. Bro, yeah. Bro. Yeah, one seventy. Are you yeah. right? Brett let me off. I think he was a Raiders fan for real, uh, but he just charged me like a hundred or whatever. And were you by yourself, or you were, were you with? Yeah, it's, you know it's crazy. I was late to treatment. That's why I was oh, going shit. that fast. Yeah, I've been there, and yeah. uh, I was like, man, if I get a ticket, I didn't even realize I was going. Yeah. Seven, I'm like, if I get a ticket, I'll pay the ticket. Like treatment yeah. fine is thirteen thousand. Like I'm not missing treatment. Like. And they were on my ass as far as like me missing treatment, so they were gonna find me the max or whatever. So H like, Rod and Scotty Touche. Yeah, so I'm like, nah, I ain't about to miss treatment. So I ain't even. You, you gotta go through some things when you're young financially, yeah. but like when, I was when you got to, man, that's part of it. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's you know. Yeah. But, but you know what's funny? Still, we're talking. To, I'm talking to Khan like he's more our age. You know why? Because he's <laughs> he's he's very he's more he's just he, he's dialed in. You know I'm what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, no, no, you know I, mean? like, bro, I'm 28 old years soul. old, I would be out there tricking off my bread, <laughs> fucking up still to this day. <laughs> I'm an old soul, man. I'm an old soul. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, but, but, but no, that, no, 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 no. I, I'm, 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 I'm super excited to, to meet you. And I, I love your conspiracy uh, type of mentality, man. You're like, yeah. I think these motherfuckers were trying to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. You have, you have the same thing. Same shit. I yeah, yeah, man. Same, yeah. same shit. Yep. It's something same. behind everything, man. Yep. yep. I, I got to ask this because I asked Ket, I asked Marquette King. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I wanted to know did you ever go to West Lafayette and play? Me? Yeah. No. Nah. You never played at Purdue? No, nah. no. Uh, actually, we went up there my freshman year, but I didn't play. I redshirted. So that would have been what? That would have been. That was 2013. 2013. Did we lose? We I either think, lost think, or yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah I think we won that game. We had Braxton Miller, yeah, because yeah, we yeah, because yeah. we went in the locker room and it was like the shadiest locker room. They were like telling us about it, and <laughs> Coach Mick they ended up breaking the, like a whiteboard and breaking the ceilings and everything because it was like those styrofoam ceilings that you can push up. <laughs> Dry, fucking and that room feelings. Up. Yeah, they were fucking it up at halftime because we were losing. I remember that game. That's I was funny. lucky, happy we lost because I was mad because I wasn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> I was rooting for y'all. <laughs> two, two different eras. Stu has told us a million stories about Al Davis. Ooh. He's from the Al era. You're from the Mark. You're from the Mark Davis era. Okay. And Cat man, he, he he told us a story. At the live, and it actually ended up going viral. New York Post, everybody picked it up, and it was it was actually hilarious about him. I was trying to get Ket on the show today, um, but he had some other stuff going on. But he put Mark Davis in a headlock and gave him a nuggie. Right, Marquette did that to Mark in, in the middle of Florida somewhere. You know the story is hilarious. I, I'll send it over to you so you can check it out. Kind of, it's, it's, it's actually hilarious. 
And I know you wouldn't do that because you're much more reserved, much more chill. But do yeah. you have any stories of Mark Davis, your time in Oakland? No, nah, it's crazy. I I rarely talk to him. Like, damn, I rarely talk to him. Like, he would be at practice or whatever, and he'd be like, it'd just be like small talk, like how you doing, whatever shit like that. But yeah, I never really talked to him. Well, you, you got to, uh, dude. That's that's our fucking boss, right? So you, it's always an uncomfortable f- conversation when you're talking to the boss. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just... <laughs> but it's also two different worlds, though, Stu, because Al was so hands on, and Mark. I was just about to say, I heard, I always heard stories about Al Davis. Like he was just more of a a player person like yeah i just i mean some people did i mean i'm reserved though so like i'm I'm one of those people like i gotta fill you out before i just talk to you or whatever yeah. like if you want to come talk to me if you say what's up i'm gonna say what's up it's not gonna be but i've i've grown now because that was like one of my resolutions for 2021 was to be more social and talk more and like because the network and not even just the network for opportunities just to like learn people and understand network to learn to, to yeah. learn and i never really cared about that like so as far as like he probably wanted to talk to me more because i was a first round pick or whatever but i just wasn't that type of person to do that like i wasn't trying did to you, talk so did when, before the draft where where did you think you were like gonna go i thought i was gonna go top 10 i ain't gonna lie and people were telling me that and it's crazy i had an old teammate tell me like uh, the Saint he played for the Saints. He was like, "Yo, they said if we're if you there at eleven, like we're picking you up." But then my rape case happened, and not saying I would have got drafted top ten or earlier, or whatever. People, everybody says that, but who knows? We'll never know. But they were saying that, but the rape case came out, and I was told I was not even gonna get drafted. So to get drafted by the Raiders in the first round, still after that, like it was a blessing for sure. Who were so some? Who were some of the you know? players you kind of watched or you know kind of tailored your game towards like in the nfl when yeah. i was in college yeah <laughs> i man i feel like everything about me is just weird like i never watched <laughs> the nfl I, I never watched football you know what i'm saying so, i didn't like, either i didn't I, watch football at all <laughs> i wasn't looking at nobody like i didn't know who to watch like i was watching reggie bush highlights it's like i'm a corner why am i watching reggie bush i just like the way he played like yeah hard and it had little wayne music on it so i would watch it but i was i really molded my game off of the the corners at hey, hey docs i'm gonna tell you this ohio state dudes are different bro yeah. Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> I molded my game off the corners at Ohio State, though. Like that's who I looked up to, like Roby, Duran. Yeah. Uh, not why? Why not Donnie Nicky? I don't even know what that is. You gotta know <laughs> what Donnie Nicky is, man. He, he was the safety that played at Ohio State. I don't know. Any- you gotta remember, he, he came up with the Von Bells. The, well, it's I, also a white no, dude, so I don't know history. Like I don't know players. Well, you 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 would know. I mean, uh, Mike Doss, right? Chris yeah, Gamble, he's from, Chris Gamble. Uh, he's from Canton. He's from Canton, though. That's Mike Doss, Chris, Mike Doss, uh, uh, Chris Gamble. To, Let's see. Uh, Roby just got picked up by Philly too. Yeah, I only know them because I play with them. Like that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like when it comes to football, I don't I don't know anybody. Like when uh, Coach Meyer and uh, it was Luke, actually. Luke Fickle at first. Luke he was the first yeah, one yeah, to come yeah. to the high Fickle school. Trickle. He was the first one to come to the high school. And all the football players were like geeked and like, Luke Fickle's here. I'm like, who the fuck is that? And they're like, you don't know who Luke Fickle is? And they show me him. And it's when they show me, I'm like, oh, that's who I just talked to in Coach Hall's office. they like, bro, you just talked to him? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know anybody. Mike Vrabel was coming to the school. They're like, bro, he won Super Bowls and da, da, da. I'm like, I don't know. No you like Mike Vrabel? People, yeah, I love Vrabel, man. Yeah. That's my dog. He was, a, he was my main recruiter in high school. He will always come just to kick it and check on me. He's definitely a leader of men. Did, did you watch Did you watch that Florida Gators doc on Netflix? I did. I had to watch it because I only watched it to see if they was doing the same shit that we did at Ohio State. <laughs> Well, I mean, what? Because that was the, the next question I was going to ask. Yeah, was yeah. it the same type of treatment? Yeah. The only difference is the mat drills. It's crazy because they probably wouldn't allow it where we was at. Uh, yeah. Because they seen it there, but the mat drills where they actually was wrestling each other and like throwing each other down, we weren't doing that. But we had like the tug of war and like the tire pull, and we were getting the fights and shit. But everything who else was uh, in, in college. Who was? Who would you say your top 
three receivers on our team. No, that you went against in the Big Ten. Oh, um, uh, I didn't play against him. Like I said, I redshirted, but the dude from Wisconsin, he was nice. Abadaris, he was nice. Um, oh, Chris Godwin, he was a good one. Oh, I yeah. played against him my senior year. Um, Chris Godwin. God was still um, doing his thing right now. I don't feel like the Big Ten had a lot of receivers. No, nah, you're right. Year. Yeah, you're right. But I feel like our best receivers was on our team. Like that's yeah. where I got my best work was during practice. Like we had Curtis Samuel, we had Mike Thomas, Devin Smith, um, Terry McLaurin, Paris Campbell. Bro, they're both balling Dixon, right now. Too. I'm actually watching that game uh, right now. Evan Spencer. We had hella people off. Who, who was one of the toughest running backs where you knew when, like, I, I gotta, when this motherfucker starts getting downhill, I gotta, I, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt a little bit. Uh, Saquon. Um, uh, oh, the dude from Wisconsin. What was his name? Uh, uh Melvin Gordon. No, he was soft. Uh, he was soft. Yes, bro. We we folded him. That motherfucker <laughs> was huge. We folded him. 59-0 in the Big Ten championship. And he was talking. I know, so I, I much. Remember, no, I remember. That he was game. talking so too. much shit before the game, and we folded his ass. Bro. What was it? A running back? Con? Yeah, yeah. Melvin Gordon. No, yeah. I'm saying from Wisconsin. Was is the guy you're yeah, talking yeah. about? Yeah, it's. I think his last name was Ball. Leon Ball. Yeah, I, maybe it was him. Like I said, he was, I number, he was number six. That yeah. motherfucker was like a goddamn he, cannonball. He ran hard as shit. <laughs> and, uh, actually, uh, Tevin Coleman, he was actually oh, shit. for Indiana. He was yeah. nice. That Big Ten has some great running backs for sure. It was a lot of dudes. For sure. If Tevin never got injured, like all the injuries he deal with, bro, like like Tevin he called me, he, he was nice. Yeah. A guy that can get it done in a passing game as well. He wasn't like the traditional just running back. Yeah, but I feel like Wisconsin was always just the the team that had the hard run. Besides Melvin, between Gordon, the like, tackles, bro. Yeah, like how football's supposed to be, dog. I love that yeah. shit. And they just always, I hated playing them. I'm like, man, I ain't getting no passes this game. It's about to be all run. I got to fucking get a concussion every you gotta game. Wear, you got to fucking play. get your neck roll on, bro. <laughs> all these motherfucking they're running you know, thirteen rush <laughs> Oh, yeah. tight ends, fullbacks. I'm like, man. what? What was one of the best stadiums you played at in college or pros? Penn State, easily. I say the same shit, dude. <laughs> that shit was bro, so. Like, I literally there, bro. just like, my that... fiance last night of a, a video of when we played them. At was it Monte? It was Monte Ball, right? Monte Ball. Monte that's Ball. That's yeah, Seattle. Yeah. That's that's why I was Monte thinking. I was Ball. I was looking like I don't he remember. He ran Ball. so fucking hard, bro. Did I say Lonzo Ball. No, you said Leon. Yeah. But 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 Monte I was. That's Leon why I was googling. Ball. I'm like, yeah, that ain't Monte it. Yeah. yeah, he he ran hard as shit for sure. But Penn go. State whiteout night game, the loudest shit. And I that ever fucking wow, 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 <laughs> that fucking <laughs> fucking lioning. <laughs> <laughs> I literally showed my literally no lie. I showed my fiance that last night. I was like, "This shit was so live." Like, well, and the, the players and, on the field and, and, the, and the field it was like a putting green, dude. Like yeah. the grass was just it was fucking just in gray. Yeah. It was small. and that stadium's almost like like this, like, like in this in, crazy. Dude, dude. Yeah, and that yeah. whiteout shit, man, and then fucking they sing that song. <laughs> What song do they sing? Which one? I don't that? even know the name of it, but they were like, uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, that shit is fire. Like, I, that shit. Is fire. Uh, I gotta make my way out there now. Y'all got me want to go. Hey, no. hey, to it's, be honest it's with it's you, live, that, that Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin jump jumping around, around. Shit, that was gonna be my second. That shit, that shit dude. The stadium fucking <laughs> with the lights and they do jump dude, around. That shit slaps like I a showed her that too. Girl. That's I crazy speak. that y'all brought the like y'all asked about it because I'm actually so against Wisconsin. I'm actually I'm I'm two and zero in Madison against Wisconsin. Yeah. We haven't beat Wisconsin since my freshman year, or no, sorry, since my senior year. Damn, they fucking have owned our shit bad. You you guys beat the fuck out of us two weeks ago. <laughs> they beat I mean, Wisconsin wait, wait, last night. Let's not talk to Kami. He but he beat both of us. Okay, let's just let's get off the collegiate. <laughs> Fucking Ohio State, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. So, look, hey, look, what, what, what are they ranked right now? That they're, they're three, whole, three. Okay, yeah. It's wow. uh, is it Georgia still? Georgia, and then Florida. Uh, yeah, jo- yeah. Georgia beat the fuck out of Florida. Florida State's four, yeah. fourth, right? I think they're fourth. Yeah, Florida State's fourth. They've yeah. been balling though, bro. Like Florida they State almost lost to Duke. 
Yeah, hey, hey, Kansas, hey, Kansas beat Oklahoma today or yesterday. Oh, they beat them. I they seen that them. they were up. That's crazy. Yeah, yep. yep. that's they crazy. were five. Were they five? Six, I think. Six. Yeah. Six. Yep. There were seven five. and zero. There were six. Yeah. I don't know who five is right now. Oh, Washington. Washington. Okay. Boom. They were in a close game last night. I don't know if they. You like Penix? Up. They were there. Who's Penix, that? dog. The quarterback, the lefty out there in Washington. He's a Washington. transfer from Indiana. I haven't watched him play. I just been bro. seeing the rank. I'm gonna I check him out. I'm Indiana, matter of fact. Bring up that all twenty-two and watch him, bro. I'm telling yeah. you, he has I like know. he can make every throw. That's oh, my that's number. Crazy. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, when has Washington been good like this? Yeah, like, the quarterback is nice. Yeah, in Oregon too. Shit, Bo Nix out there. They balling out there in Oregon yeah. too. I seen something about him. Yeah, they said like he in his twentieth year or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, a hey, hey, Penix, a hey, Penix is uh six three two sixteen. Oh yeah, he throwing that thing probably too. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. they Definitely. got new receivers. Rocky. Yes, yes. Yeah. They have a dude defense named. Good? What is it? Is their defense good? I don't know because I, I, the the games I've watched with Washington, and I'm not I'm not that you know, Fort but Notre Dame. They've given up a lot of points. Yeah. Like, there, there's a lot of they're high just, scoring games. They're just outscoring people. Yeah. Real quick, you guys, I want to do this also, man. Once again, I want to put up, um, you guys, if you can, leave real quick. Come right back. Make sure you guys go subscribe to Khan's um, podcast. I'm not going to keep Khan all day. We're coming up on two hours, and I just I love the conversation. But I, I, I want everybody to go over there real quick. Subscribe to our brother. Like I always say, man. Hey, hey, really Con, hey Con, take my number down, bro. Yeah, I definitely will. Yeah, send Wait, it. You want to give it over here? No, no, no. Dude, send it over. <laughs> send it over to Con. I, I'll text it to him right now. Yeah, text me. Nah, yeah, all right. Stu don't give a shit, bro. He'll He's say about it right to say now. It online. Like a bunch of people calling. It says um, the comment has failed. Po Why won't it let me? It won't let me put my number. Uh, I, oh no, I got it. I got it. You I got, got it. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send it over right now. Um, make sure everybody goes over there, man. Hit that subscribe button on Con's podcast, man. Like I said before, it's positive. It's 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 mental health. It's it's stuff for the youth. It's it's a different type and of. Journey. We need. I, I tell you what, man. I, I, it's nice to see some good um, role models because I watch some of these videos and I'm looking at how many people have watched these things and I'm thinking that's a lot of people watching somebody they shouldn't be watching. So yeah, anytime that you can be a positive influence and again help the youth, dude, it, it's huge. So. They, we we need more male role models to be honest with you man so yeah. hey real quick I, I created a group chat with us three i just said boom so you guys gotcha. both of you guys, the numbers are in there right. um right. and, and i want to do this con moving forward too bro next year's alumni party Stu, we mm. got to get con out there bro. yeah no right real talk we got we all got to go out there i, I do just, you, so do you, do you have who do you talk to from the raiders because i want you to be back no, uh, I gotta look in my email. It was, just, I think it was a lady that just emailed Katie? me. Katie, like Katie Flath. I'm gonna just look real quick. Raiders. Yeah, get get connected with them. Even oh. even if you're playing for somebody else, dude. Like, yeah, get get connected with them. That's always it's just always a good relationship to have. You know, and what I mean, too, when you're when you're done, done, dude. There's a lot of there's a lot of um. Uh, what would you call it? A lot of things available to you that, yeah. uh, and a lot of times you don't like. It, it's hard to find some of the stuff. But as the older guys, we kind of know what's going on. So, uh, and, and, and the networking is endless too, kind of like yeah. you know, yeah. being around other players yeah. and, and guys that own businesses. Well, plus, dude, you're Big Ten, bro. I mean, shit, and you're Midwest. Yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely got a link, man. Yeah. Let me know. I'll definitely come out there for sure. Definitely. One more time, real quick, Con. Let everybody know where they can follow you at, brother. Social media, YouTube, wherever you want to plug, plug it in, man. Yeah. Um, my Instagram is underscore G Conley eight, and then uh the podcast Instagram is uh, G Conley eight. You said underscore G Conley eight is my Instagram, and then the was that your number in that, 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 your number. Yeah, eight? that was my number in college. Yeah, and then the podcast Instagram, all the social medias are the same. There's a uh, different views podcast. That's the name of it. That's the handle for it. And then okay. I got the Conley Island. That's my training page, Instagram. Uh, like I said, I train receivers and DBs. 
I'm gonna get to the point where I'm doing college and uh NFL. Uh shit, I would do it now if they came, but obviously they in season. But yeah, I want to train like all levels. I do high school and youth right now, but definitely want to get that going more. Do you do you have a facility or do, are you just using nah, like, high school? I use the high school fields. Yeah. 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 But they're open all the time out here. Like that's what I'd be trying to get these kids to understand. Like in Ohio. The fields ain't open all the time like this, and you can't just train all year round. Like you got winter, like out here. Yeah, it's it's actually, it's, it's about to. It actually might snow tomorrow. Yeah, I'm about yeah. to go to the field right now. <laughs> like, there you go. It's just do open. Your, do your thing, bro. Like I said before, man. Kyle, we always appreciate you pulling up, man. And, and oh yeah, man. It, it was a dude. It was a pleasure. It was yeah. an absolute pleasure meeting you, man. I, and I hope that we can continue to uh, know each other. And I think we got a lot of a lot of synergies, uh, yeah, you know, sure. so I I'd love to sit, sit with you sometime and pick your brain on what you think about life and, you know, the universe. And what, what, what would you guys think about this? If I asked you guys at some point, I know still you're always down. We've done it before at some point in the, in the near future, let's do a, um, let's do a breakdown. Let's do some DB work. Let's, let's, let's bring oh, up the film. Done. Let's bring up some film. It could be Ohio State, Purdue. It could be the Raiders, whatever. We can just sit down and break down some X's and O's. I would love that, man, to be able to watch you guys both. It'd be in cool, too, because you have a corner and a safety, too. So that, that, yeah. that, We watched it in the film, film room. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, hey, yeah. that would be a great show at some point to be able to break some film down. That would be solid, solid work. Once again, you guys, make sure everybody goes over there and subscribes to Khan's new podcast. And make sure you guys also go over there. You know, Stu, this is his home as well. But go over there and um, go support Stu's YouTube channel as well. Well, Stuart Schweiger. I know he hasn't been active like he usually yeah. is, but he has yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. But go over there and subscribe to Stu's channel as well. And, um, man, brother, once again, man, I appreciate you, Khan. Get out there, man. Get to work. I already know you got a lot of shit going on. I appreciate you, bro, pulling up kind of last minute. I know I texted you the other day. I was like, yo, whoop, whoop, whoop. So I appreciate you, man, for pulling up. And I want to get I want to get Nick on uh, soon, also, man. I yeah, want to get Nick on, too, but appreciate y'all having me on. It was a great uh, pleasure to meet you as well. And anytime, bro. Like I said, I'm always I work out and then I be chilling. So I, I know your schedule, so yeah. I, I'll definitely hit you up, brother. Um, outside of that, man, shout out to everybody. And if there was any difficulties on YouTube, you guys, that was not on our part. I was told today that YouTube is tweaking all over the place. So. Uh, if you guys got to run it back and check out the show, run it back and check it out. Salute to everybody here in the building. Big bro, I'm going to call you in a second. Con, my brother, right, I appreciate man. you once again. You guys have a blessed day. We out. Wow.